every friendship, a mental and spiritual dialect naturally originates to serve the unique experiences and expressions indigenous to that relationship. In our case, the dialect has a name. It is called emu. The sound you hear when the words he is me and I am you are spoken at light speed. Emu is not Dada. It does not share its political spine. It is not surrealism. It does not share its earnest intentions. Emu is for homo ludens, a playful form of linguistic desperation in which our inner child offers its milk teeth to the sun, hoping to bribe itself out of kindergarten. Emu, like good sex, is oral and improvised, and also like good sex, disposable. Let it be understood, there is no set definition of emu, and the attempt to define it is merely an excuse to engage in more emu. Let it also be understood that there are no rules in emu, but there is one tradition. When addressing another emuer, we begin by saying, But sir! You are an Amish plastic surgeon, wiping the sweat from your brow to change God's plan for your face. But sir, your voice spins into my life like a prodigal son's diary, a verbal boomerang composed of minerals and roots held together by recurring dreams, sticky intervals. But sir, to admit this is an infinitive fork, grammatical cutlery at the meal, where redemption is the main course and Tarzan's loincloth is the napkin in our lap. But sir, can I borrow the sugar you retrieved from Attila's skull the day he bequeathed his hopscotch to the Tiber? But sir, I accept your request and execute the contract with the ink of human kindness, sealing it with the hands we stole from Madame Tussauds. Rusty pieces of day-old moonlight distributed eucharistically to the antelope audience. Posing as the three musketeers, a scene change, a costume change, and an intermission duel their way logarithmically into your affections. A soliloquy sublets your psychic space. Say, I, I mean, uh, I, I want to say, how my pinstripe moments tremble under your Joan of Arc light. But sir, in the green room beneath the stage, an actor drinks coffee under the portrait of a dead benefactress, whose addiction to salt water taffy ruined her marriage and sent five sons to therapy or to war. The soliloquy upstairs, a distraction from his soiled newspaper. The box office manager assassinates latecomers and throws their bodies into waiting taxis. It is the last act. It is the last act pounding itself, knocking itself into consciousness, pounding, pounding into awareness, finality. I am here to say the last act. But, sir, I await your 
Epistolary Strudel. Is the bakery on strike? But sir, has it been an ice age already? I was waiting for the Great Lakes to appear, so I could send you a message by bottle. I will visit you in installments. My body parts will arrive, one by one, single file at your door, like a line of men waiting for a urinal. Liquefy the eclipse for me. Use the fluid to glue my parts back together. My reassembled cell will drift under the clouds, catching the Gnosticism of your words and trading it for the Gongora of friendship. And now, my blessing, may your similes be as sleek as a rainbow's manure.